That goes over that? That would be right there. Are you guys giants? You get caked. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, that's how you do it. I'm Jameson. And I'm Jamie. And this is Brayden and Maddie. We recently took a leap of faith, trading in our home in Georgia for some space in my parents' house. We gave up my high paying corporate job to pursue our dream of building stuff and empowering others. Whether we're building a family, building a business, building a house, or building a table, we like to do it ourselves. This is our DIY life. Hey guys, I'm Jameson and this is Jamie and this is episode 12 of Our Dream House Build. In this episode, we go over some of the main spaces of our home. One being, most importantly, the kitchen. Absolutely. Every time I come in the kitchen, you in the kitchen. <laughs> kitchen, <laughs> in a the food. So we're gonna go over all the details of the kitchen, the laundry room, and if you wanna learn more about the planning stages of the kitchen, you can refer back to episode six where we covered all of the layout and design of the kitchen. And the appliances that we were gonna put in there. We took a trip to Chicago and figured out everything that we wanted in our kitchen. So go back and check out episode six if you wanna learn more about that. All right, so first things first, we had the flooring all installed and then we started bringing in the cabinets. Now, we had the cabinets made by an Amish cabinet maker just outside of town, and it was really neat. We got to go over and visit that, um, that shop and see the process of how they make cabinets without electricity. Once we started bringing the cabinets in, Jamie's father and I um, started installing them, which was not as bad of a process as I thought. Once we got all the cabinets installed, part of that process was actually installing the range hood, which was a little bit more uh, tedious than I had imagined. Getting the insert up into the hood that was custom made for that insert took some time. I don't know any of this because I wasn't doing it, but I just achieved a goal. 
Stan. Yeah. <laughs> Stan goal. <laughs> Go me. <laughs> Now we went with quartz because it's just a like one of the premium materials that you can put in as a kitchen countertop and the brand that we chose was Duresco. Now Duresco is a Belgium based company but now they have opened a chapter or whatever you want to call it here in the United States and they just make really nice colors. They're more modern, they're not like really uh, veiny and all kinds of crazy stuff which we really liked. We didn't want anything that we thought might go out of style um, in the future. So one of the things I really wanted with the kitchen island was to have a waterfall on each side. Um, so when we were doing this countertop, this island, we actually got the maximum length that you could get in a quartz slab. And then we had the edges laminated to about three, what was it, three inches? About three inches thick. Now the thing about it was, was that we were planning out the island, we knew that we didn't want any seams in it. So we basically took a full slab and uh, just trimmed off the edges and made it as wide as we could without uh, having a seam in there. Now when it came to the waterfall and the the thicker edge basically um, This is everything is mitered and put together. So this isn't truly three inches thick What we did was they mitered it and then kind of returned that quartz to go down and look um, Give you the appearance that it is three inches thick But it was still really heavy it was really heavy. So the problem with that was is that this is just all one piece. So the miter and everything, everything that's doubled up and underneath of this um, needed to be done before they brought it in. Yeah. So this top was one piece and then they brought in the sides separately. But however, they had to essentially move an entire slab, uh, more than an plus entire little, slab, plus yeah. all the other additions to that slab. They had to move it inside on a dolly. That meant somebody manually had to, like two men picked it up, put it on a dolly, and then Not rolled it in here. Not two men picked it up, it was like six men picked it up, put well, it then, on a dolly, and somehow magically brought it inside yeah. of the house. Then luckily we got it in here, and we had five of us that got together and put that slab up on top of the countertops. Um, and it, it worked out, it's and still it's, standing here, so. And it's beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> All right, so during the installation of the countertops, they also had to install the sinks. The sinks that we went with, we actually did two sinks, one larger sink over here, which is our main sink, and then we have a prep sink in the island. 
So we went with Blanco for our sinks. And in the Prep Island sink, I went with a black still granite sink from them. And I absolutely love it. It's very durable and it just looks like it's sinking down into the black cabinet. Yeah, because we have black cabinets um, below the island. So the cool thing is when you're looking into that hole, it almost looks like you're looking into the island, which is kind of neat. Yeah, and for Ooh. our main sink, I went with the Quattress from Blanco. And I love this sink because it has all the cool workstation features. Yeah. It has a cutting board, it has a place to store your utensils that you're using, it has a colander. It is just a great work sink. And also, we did the devil bowls, which is perfect because yeah. I hate dirty dishes. <laughs> Touching clean things. <laughs> so we've got two big double bowls on that sink, and it's like a, a really high-end looking stainless steel sink, and overall, it just works out really well for our family. And of course, with the sinks, we had to go with the perfect faucet. And I love the Trendsic from Delta. It is actually what we went with for both. Um, over on the main sink, it is the Touch 2O feature, which is so handy when you're cooking. You never have to touch a sink with dirty hands. You can just hit it with your arm and it turns on, it's perfect. Yeah, we've had Delta faucets in our other homes and we've really, really liked those and being able to incorporate those into our main sink and our... Um, prep sink. Prep sink, that's what I was looking for. Uh, was really nice to have. And a pot filler. There you go, yeah. So the, the cool thing is that we, we didn't just go with one single material in here. We kind of mixed and match our finishes when it comes to the faucets, the hardware, and all of that stuff. All of our hardware is from Amarok Hardware, and I absolutely love it. We went with a clean black hardware on the cabinets that are tapestry, which is the color. And then we also did the, um, above the, the ladder rail, we did um, gold handles. And then we have the gold on the island as well against the black. Yeah. So when we, were, when we were putting this kitchen together, we knew that we wanted the cabinets to go all the way to the ceiling. The problem with that is then we end up with these cabinets that are super high up and out of reach. And I've seen Jamie do it in our previous house. She's always- You just um, climb on top of the cabinets. Climbing on top of a bar stool <laughs> or the cabinets themselves. And it can be dangerous, especially if you're trying to get something down that might be breakable. Now, the cool thing is that we actually installed a library ladder rail in our kitchen that is above the upper cabinets and below the upper, upper cabinets, the ones that are really high up. Yeah, and the only thing that I really keep up there is more seasonal stuff. Um, I don't leave the ladder out usually all the time. We have a storage spot in our pantry that we keep the ladder, but it's nice to be able to pull out the ladder and access the things that I don't ever really use that I have <laughs> that I need once a year. So it's an easy way to get them. And the cool thing was that when I needed to figure out the ladder that was going to go in here, we headed on over to Rockler Hardware and Woodworking, Woodworking, Rockler Woodworking and Hardware, and they actually have a library laddered wizard which is kind of cool because the little wizard comes out and it shows you how to put, the, no, it doesn't really do that, but it's actually like a program where you can go through and build your ladder exactly how you wanted. We chose the hard maple rails and we went with um, a, cast, a solid cast iron step, which looks really cool. And um, you know, we, you can go back and mix and match those, the different features or parts of the rail and then determine how long you want your rail to be and it will kind of put together a little kit for you. Once we got that in, then all we had to do was assemble the ladder, which didn't take hardly any time at all. We actually had to pre-finish, or we could finish those maple rails exactly how we wanted, and mm -hmm. we chose an oil finish for those. Um, so after assembling that, installing the railing on the, the part of the cabinets that we had uh, designed to accept that, uh, we were ready to go.
Obviously, lighting is really important in any space. However, in the kitchen in general, we needed to make sure that things were lit appropriately, appropriately, but also looked nice. So I handed that over to Jamie to decide exactly what lights go where. So one thing I've always loved is lights above a kitchen sink on a wall, and that is something we decided to do kind of last minute in yeah. the design is we decided to put lights above all of the windows. We chose the Northland light from Kitchler, and I absolutely love it. Against that tile, it just kind of blends right in, but at night it gives it this really nice glow above yeah. the sink that it I love. It reminds me of like a coffee shop or it something. It does. Very coffee shop vibes at night. Yeah. Or wine shop vibes, I don't know, <laughs> but. Either or. <laughs> Another light fixture that I absolutely love is the Everly pendant from Kitchler. Um, they're the three pendants that we did above the island and they are huge. Our island is very big, so it needed a very big, amazing light to go above it. And the interesting thing was that as we were hanging these lights, I was looking and they looked a little bit different from one another. And my electrician was saying that he thinks that these things were actually hand blown, which mouth blown. Mouth blown. You can obviously. <laughs> he says it every time you talk about the lights. You, you say don't blow with your blown. hands, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's, they're handmade. They're mouth blown. So each one of them is has its own distinct characteristics, and it's a little bit different from the other one. Yeah. And I just love that. I love that. I think it's really cool. When he was telling us this, I actually thought. That he was blowing smoke, <laughs> yeah. and he just kind of screwed up. He's the like, inside. "Oh yeah, yeah, that one's a little bit, you know." <laughs> like, oh, and then I found the sticker, and it was proof. Yeah. So we love these lights. The other thing that I kind of wanted to do to kind of trick out our kitchen a little bit was obviously the undermount lighting. We went with LED uh, tape lighting for the undermount so that obviously you can't see that and um, it just looks really good. However, the other thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to install toe kick lighting. And the cool thing about that is that there is lights, there's LED strips underneath of each one of our toe kicks and that illuminates the walkways and what we use it most for is actually at night, this pathway lighting. So we yeah. will turn it down to about, only about 3% at night and all that, that's all the light that's required to give you just enough light throughout these spaces so that you're not tripping as you're walking throughout the house and you kind of know where everything is. And we mix metals everywhere in the house and one of my favorite lights from Kitchler is actually the Moorgate. It's what we put above our dining room and it's really neat because it mixes the gold and the black which is similar to what we have in our kitchen hardware as well. Yep. All right, so rather than just standing in one place and talking about it, let's take you on a tour of the kitchen and show you all the ins and outs. All right, so one thing that I was undecided about but I actually really enjoy is actually, we have two trash cans um, or actually two double trash cans rather in our kitchen. So we have one over there by the main sink and we also have a double trash can right here by the prep sink, which is nice for, um, you know, if we're having a party and a large group of people, it's just nice that you don't have to walk all the way across the kitchen to throw, some, throw something out. So the island is mainly used for a prep area for me. This is why we put the prep sink here. But we also have this fun cabinet here that houses my KitchenAid mixer. Prior to having this, I never pulled this mixer out because it was too heavy and I never liked it sitting on the sink, so this lift is ideal for it. And it's a soft, it's a soft closed mixer lift, so she can simply just unlock that and let it go and it will put itself back away nice and easily. And then it's also got that drawer below it for all the attachments and stuff like that. And then of course we had to have a wine fridge. And this wine fridge is actually from Mila and it is one of my favorites in the kitchen because it just seems so fancy when you open it. So the cool thing about the wine fridge is that there's no handle, which means that you have to, it has a touch to open feature. You simply push on the upper corner um, to open it. And then it also has a dual, uh, dual climate. So we've got red wines up top and white wines down below or other sodas and stuff for the kids. So we can keep the red wines at the temperature that it should be about 60, 64 degrees or so. Um, and that has been like a main part of our kitchen. Another one of the fun features in our kitchen, instead of having a spice rack that's usually down the side um, where the range is, we ended up doing this, I guess, stadium style spice rack so I can see everything. It's laid out. It's a little unorganized right now, but it houses all of my spices and more. Another nice feature of our kitchen is this knife drawer. We had this insert put in here. Um, the Amish guys actually put it in for us and it just keeps all your knives organized and keeps all the sharp stuff safe away from the kids. So obviously the, the display here is for this oven. There's another display over there for the main larger oven. Um, and those are a little bit harder to read 
like they are now. So we've got this cool feature built in where the panel will actually rotate up and out so that you can see the screen more clearly from the standing position. So this oven is actually, or this range rather, is actually known as a dual fuel range. And what that means is essentially that there is gas ran to the cooktop because cooking with gas on the cooktop, if you're not aware, um, it just heats things up faster and it gets your water boiling quicker in a shorter amount of time. And then we've got electric running down to the range. And the reason for running electric to the range is that you get a more heat, an even heat out of electric. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we had to run to this range as we were installing it was water. The, uh, the oven, the ovens, I think just one just the oven. oven. It has a moisture assist button or Yeah, like a steam assist or a something. A steam like, assist, yeah. so that's what it's called. So if you're cooking like a turkey or something in the oven, you can add a little burst of steam every now and then to make sure the meat is nice and moist. Ooh, moist. Moist, his favorite word. <laughs> so the other feature of this oven is that there is a warming drawer down below. So this warming drawer will keep uh, anywhere from coffee mugs to plates and even food warm for as long as you as long as you need it to. You can adjust the temperature as well as the duration of how long you need this to heat. And then I think his favorite feature of this whole range so far has been the griddle. And the what griddle. I love the most about this is that you can cover it up. Yeah, so we can hide the griddle because it's not necessarily, after you've been cooking on it and seasoning a griddle, it's not necessarily the most attractive part of the oven. Um, however, we've got this top here that you can slide both to um, to either side, and what that's going to do is it, it, it covers it, but it also allows this um, allows you to cover up the burners while you're cooking on the griddle, so that those don't get dirty. Another one of the great features about the Mila oven is the Gourmet Center. Um, they have a Master Chef program where you can put in anything that you are making, like baked goods. We can make cupcakes, and it will cook them at the correct temperature, adding steam assist or whatever that it needs. You can also select your operating mode. So whether you're cooking convection bake, surround bake, adding moisture, auto roasting, browning, broiling, there's pretty much an option for everything on here. So while the range is kind of like the heart of the kitchen, um, this is like the epicenter. This is like, this is my second heart of the kitchen. This is what, this is what keeps me going. Well, Morning like this and night. whole area. So, <laughs> Here we've got um, the refrigerator. We'll start on this side. So we've got the refrigerator and freezer from Mila, and these obviously have the, um, they're panel ready. Panel so ready. we had our Amish um, make, our Amish, our Amish cabinet makers make the uh, the panels to go on top of the, the refrigerator. Yeah, one, one thing I love in a kitchen is when everything is kind of hidden. So we did the panel ready on our refrigerator and freezer as well as our dishwasher. So this section just kind of looked very clean. So the cool thing about the Mila refrigerator and freezer is that you can, you can mix and match the sizes. These are two separate units. So we chose a 30 inch freezer and an 18 inch, uh, no. 30 inch refrigerator and an 18 inch freezer to make up a total space of 48 inches. And the thing that I like about the fridge is being an engineer or a former engineer, I love the materials that they use. They're stainless steel and everything is built to last. So all of the hinges and the tracks for for all of the shelves and stuff like that is very well built and easily adjustable. And, um, and I easy, easy to clean up, clean up too, because all of these plastic parts, they pop out and you can just run them through the dishwasher and it's an easy, easy fridge to clean. And then you can also adjust all of these, um, these lower and upper parts of the refrigerator, the drawers, you can adjust the different uh, drawers and select if you're, if you're, if you have fruit, meat, deli, dairy, fish, or vegetables, in those drawers and it will set the temperature accordingly. Wow, I've never done that. I should probably do that. Holy <laughs> I didn't know I could do that. Another design feature that I absolutely love about the fridge and freezer is the use of these baskets in the freezer. It's just easier to clean a freezer when there are baskets instead of plastic bins. And they're also easy to adjust. I've never done that, so I don't know if they're easy to adjust, but they are actually very easy to adjust. I didn't even know that they could do that. Yeah. Man, I'm learning so many things right now. One of the things that I am very proud of, or I love actually how it turned out, was the design of this cabinet right here and everything that it um, contains. It houses like some of the most important things. So we've got this drawer down here for all of those pans 
And then we've also got this cabinet up here. And as you can see, I thought personally it was gonna be way too much space, but we apparently- realized it all. <laughs> apparently there's never too much space for pans and, and cooking things. things. Cooking things. So those are something that we really enjoy having and just makes it easier and convenient to have everything right there. One thing that has totally changed our lives is this coffee maker from Mila. It is, it is everything. It is pretty much one of my favorite things in this house. The cool thing about it is that um, it is plumbed. And what that means is that it has a water line that is ran to this machine and that means we never have to fill it up with water, which yep. is really awesome because we used to have a Keurig Shame and you Keurig. had to <laughs> and you had to constantly fill that reservoir up with water. So having a plumbed coffee maker that's built in is epic. Yes, but not only is that like the thing that makes this coffee maker so special, but it's just the coffee that it makes. You can do anything from a latte, you can do a macchiato, you could have an espresso midday. It is just, it is amazing. It is amazing. So the coffee maker will make an espresso, a regular coffee, a lungo coffee, which is just a, a regular coffee with more water added to it. There's a cappuccino, a latte macchiato, a cafe latte. It can also do just milk froth, hot milk, an entire coffee pot or hot water on demand. Another fun thing is that you can set profiles on this coffee maker. So he might drink his coffee, coffee differently than I drink. I can set the temperature and how strong I like my coffee. And you can go in here and select your coffee on your profile and have it make it exactly how you want it. So how do you get the coffee into the coffee machine? Jamie's well, gonna open it up and show you the secret little how door here. Works. And this is where we store all of our coffee. This is the hopper that holds the whole beans and each cup is ground. Ground, yeah. Yeah, each cup is ground. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there, that's where the, the, or the, the whole, whole bean beans are stored. This is the water reservoir, so if you were to not have a plumb unit, you would have to fill this up as it needed. Over here is where the spent coffee goes. So after it's brewed, it dumps the, the coffee waste into this container, which can be emptied out uh, when it's full. We've got the drip tray here that catches any water that drains off of this. And then up here, we've got a spot to hold ground coffee. Like for instance, if you wanted to do decaf and you wanted to keep ground coffee in here, and then you could put that ground coffee into the chute right here and, and brew a cup of decaf coffee or something different. Who drinks decaf coffee? Maybe you're into like those flavored coffee. Absolutely drinks. not. Coffee. The machine also rinses itself every time it starts up and then every time it shuts down to make sure that all the pipe work and any coffee that's in those lines gets flushed out. And right below the coffee maker, we've got a drawer that houses all of our coffee mugs or coffee things. And um, if you're like us and you need that cup of coffee in the morning, then it is just so nice to have it all right here. Now we're gonna move on down to the steam oven. And if you haven't heard of a steam oven before, um, you should. You, you should, should really should, look into it because it. it will blow your mind in the kitchen. And I, unfortunately, I can't open it right now because I am cooking ribs in the steam oven. But so this is not just a steam oven. It is actually a, um, it's a combination steam. oven. Yeah, combi steam oven. So it also has all the capabilities of a typical oven, but it can steam as well. And what that means is cooking with steam. So the nice thing about this is if you want to steam vegetables or anything like that, you throw them in here, you can choose the master chef program or you can do it manually by selecting a mode. Um, and you can run through those programs and it will steam your vegetables, which is nice because it's gonna, steaming food is just a, it's, it's a better way of cooking because you're maintaining all the nutrients that are inside of those vegetables. And, um, and not just vegetables. I do rice in this every morning. I make my egg in this. I have, I saved a setting for how I like my eggs every morning. It's under favorite. And I just put my eggs in a bowl and I stick it in there. I've hard boiled eggs in this. You can do canning in this. You can cook meat in this. It is just, it's one of my most used appliances next to the coffee machine every single day. So having the addition of the steam oven in our kitchen has really changed 
how I cook a lot. I used to do a lot of stuff on the range, um, and I still will occasionally, but this has replaced anything that you would cook, boil in water. You can do your pasta in here, you can do everything in here. So it's really just, it's a very cool tool to now have in this amazing kitchen. And since we were planning on putting this in during construction, we also, we plumbed both the coffee maker and the steam oven with a water line, a direct water line to those, so we don't have to continue to add water to it. Um, however, there is a, a reservoir in there, so if you didn't have the capabilities of plumbing the unit, you'd be able to fill that reservoir with water. Um, we also have a drain line that connects to our sink, and any water that gets flushed out of the unit just drains properly. Mm -hmm. So obviously, or normally, typically, in most kitchens, beside the sink, you have the dishwasher. Now, we have stuck with the whole panel-ready theme of being able to uh, blend the dishwasher into our cabinet. So we've got a panel made. We have the appliance pull um, for this. And this is just one of those ultra-quiet um, dishwashers from Mila. And it's just really, it has really nice features like being able to store the silverware on top and in the flat manner makes, makes for more space down below. And the adjustability and all that stuff. I think my favorite feature of this dishwasher itself is after it's done running the cycle, it pops itself open to allow any of the steam to come out. So it's actually fully drying all your dishes, um, but it's air drying all your dishes, yeah. allowing all the steam to come out. So your and plastics and everything are actually dry when you go to put them away. So emptying the dishwasher, one of my favorite things that we did in this kitchen is where we placed our utensil drawer. So instead of a standard top drawer, we did this whole long drawer and had these little containers little put in canisters, there. Little canisters, yeah. Little canisters put in there, and it just makes, it makes it a lot easier to unload the dishwasher with it being right here. You're not stacking up. You can just grab all your forks, throw them in the thing, and call it a day. And these can canisters come out for easy cleaning, or if we're having a party or something like that, we can just set them out on the counter for people to have access to. All right, so behind this pocket door, we've got our pantry. And most of the time, this pocket door actually stays open, so we wanted the pantry to look nice. There's that motion activated light that we talked about. Um, so in order to make sure that it looked nice, we added a tile backsplash. We continued the quartz into here over top of um, some cabinets to be able to store all the food and other things. Um, we do have plans to put in some floating shelves over here. Um, just to kind of finish that off and be able to stack other things up above. So when we were picking out backsplashes, Jamie knew that we wanted to do two different backsplashes, one for the main um, behind the range and then one for this wall over here. We knew that we wanted to continue it all the way up um, and we went with a darker, like a charcoal yeah, since hex we had, tile. We have the black windows everywhere in the house. I just wanted something to have the window kind of blend in. So really the main focus was the view outside and not so much the black windows on a white tile. All right, so thank you guys for tuning in to episode 12. And I can smell the ribs cooking, so I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. In episode 13, we're gonna be covering the outdoor spaces. We've still got a couple of odds and ends to wrap up out there. So you can follow along in the Instagram stories to make sure that you get all of those updates as they're happening in real time. And uh, until next time. Be safe and happy building. We'll see you guys later.